What's up, y'all? It's Chief Min, and today we're going to talk about Gangplank's new build path for this current patch. With all the item changes this season, Gangplank's build has seen many changes. At the start of the preseason, Gangplank was struggling due to having major issues with the crit items. Crit was dependent on having all 5 crit items to maximize crit damage, and the non-crit items were too weak for Gangplank. Now near the end of the preseason, they decided to buff Essence Reaver and Infinity Edge, so now Gangplank's build path would be Essence Reaver, Shield Bow, and Infinity Edge. Even with this build, it was rough to play Gangplank since he didn't have the base stats he used to get from the previous items in the previous seasons. Trinity Force at the time was considered a bad item. It had terrible stats and it also had a lackluster myth, uh, mythic passive that not, not a lot of champs wanted to build. Not even the champs like Jax or like Darius and all that. It's just useless on them. So now, as of recently, Gangplank's build path has completely changed. Ever since Cerberus Fang was included into the game, it has been getting constantly buffed. Not only that, in patch 11.7, Trinity Force got a massive buff with a tweak at base stats along with a new mythic passive. The build I'll be discussing was created by Solar Baka. The build has a lot of utility and survivability, but you also do a decent amount of damage. But there are other builds you can do along with uh, various build paths, but that rarely happens. So let's discuss the main build. But before we discuss the builds, I quickly want to talk about what boots to go. Tabbies or CDR. You build CDR boots most of the time, but in some cases you have to go Tabbies. I would build Tabbies against out of tag champions like Aurelia, Fiora, Jax, or any ranged top laner. If you're not going against any of these champions, then it's CDR boots. CDR boots are one of the most cost efficient items you can get. It provides 20 ability haste for only the price of 950 gold. So now that we got that out of the way, let's discuss the builds. The main build will be Trinity Force, Serpent's Fang, Chem Punk, Jane Sword, and the rest is situational. Your fourth item could either be Zong's Hourglass, Lord Diamond's Regards, or The Collector. Zong's Hourglass when going against heavy engage comps, Lord Diamond's Regards if the enemy is stacking a bunch of armor, or Collector if you have a lead and none of the above apply. These are the items you should mostly buy. Now with this build, Gangplank is more utility based. He's not the one shot carry kill. He's more like lure down your stats, make sure he provides the stats that his team needs and also becomes some of a nuisance for the enemy team. But not only that, like Gangplank does deal a good amount of damage with this build. It's like in season 10 when Gangplank build Trinity Force, Essence Reaver, and Leandris. Gangplank does deal a good amount of damage, but he's also providing the utility that his team needs. So with this build, you're helping your team reduce healing, reduce shields, and not only that, if you were in a situation where you were caught, you can easily pop Zonia's Hourglass. Now the reason why this build works is because it's so cost efficient. You have to understand that a lot of the items that you were to go if you were building crit cost a heavy amount, but since Serpent's Fang is 2600 and Zonia's Hourglass I think is the same price as that too, along with uh, Chem Punk Chainsword is also 2600, you're saving a lot of gold, getting your power spike sooner, and be more active on the map by doing so. All right, so let's talk about Muramana. This item is by far becoming one of my most favorite items on Gangplank. Uh, it just helps a lot with early lane phase with mana problems and all that stuff. And it's just a pretty solid item overall. It gives you a decent amount of ability haste, damage, and just overall just like utility. So now you're probably wondering, when would you go Muramana? You will go Muramana into matchups where you harass a lot with your Q, or maybe into like tank matchups like Mundo, Scion or Orn, but in some uh, situations, I would actually build Muramana into Riven, Fiora, or even Jax, just to help with a better mid to late game on Gangplank. Now, now the reason behind it is that when you go in this build, your fourth, fifth, and sixth item kind of is just awkward. You have all the items that you want, but sometimes you will just have one item that is just out of the ordinary, and so Muramana really fits that spot. Now you're probably wondering when would you finish Muramana? Well, sometimes you can finish it second depending how often uh, you queue or use your abilities to farm. Sometimes I get a second, sometimes I get a third. Sometimes it's actually not good to get a second when there's a lot of shields on the enemy team. So let's say there's like Lulu and Ivern. Around your second items is when you start grouping a lot and your ultimate really does matter. So sometimes it's actually good to postpone Mermada into a third item or fourth item, depending, let's say they also have last sustain and you need those like three items of utility for your team. All 
Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was very informative for those who are either new to gameplay or is out of the loop with the current build. I understand that this season it literally feels like a gameplay has a new build every month, so hopefully this helps a lot. For any more questions, please comment and I'll be more than glad to answer. And if you haven't, please like and subscribe, it really does help a lot. And make sure to follow my Twitter and Twitch. Links will be down below and shown on the screen. Hope you guys have a good day. Take care. Peace.